great. The love of football brings you all together. Your love of your country is even more important and strengthens everything. And you feel you're part of your, your nation. And you're proud of your nation abroad, not only what the boys do on the street, but our history. Superb. But we're all family. We're all family. All Welsh fans. Three, five, six thousand of us away. We're all family. Hello, Mary, I feel you need me. Kneel down low and listen clearly. I'm going to tell you what you need to know. It breaks my heart, but I'm letting you go. So take off that wedding ring I gave you. Let them in, let someone save you. From the cold and from the dark. From this endless second dark. Good morning and welcome to Lequa Stadium in Cardiff, where Wales will take on England in the first under-18s match in over 20 years. Joining me in the country today is Jordan Jones from the Club Pildroid. Jordan, how are you doing today? I'm good, doing well, thank you, Owen. Good stuff. So we'll have a quick look at the starting lineups just before the teams come out here. And uh, the, the Wales starting line, we've got Max Williams in goals, captained by Keelan Williams. Tom Davis, Harry Jones and Taylor Jones make up the three Joneses. Jay Williams is the force of centre-back. Charlie Savage playing in the middle of the park. Ollie Ewing and Ryan Vig Vigas. And then Joel Cottrell and Chris Popov in attack. On the bench we have Ben Hughes, Keen Williams of Swansea City. Harry Leeson, Zach, and Zach Bell and Zach Williams. Rio Dyer, Luke Mariette, Connor Salisbury, Lewis Twamley of Newport County and Cameron Congreve. So, uh, Jordan, are you expecting a good game here today? Yeah, there's so many good players on show as well. A number have played for first teams uh, at senior level, and there's some great names. And Looking forward to seeing the stars of the future. I'd be interested to see how uh, Rob Edwards' line-up shapes. Obviously, this is great preparation ahead of the Under-19s tournaments, which, which start later this year. But just before we get on to the match coverage today, it's a very special day at the Cardiff City Stadium for a certain Chris Gunter. And let's have a quick look at how that match went and his feedback after the game in terms of the uh, 100th anniversary, 100th cap, apologies, 100 cap appearance for him. Fantastic achievement reaching 100 caps. So we want to celebrate that um, this evening in the right and proper way. I'm going to ask the gaffer, Rob Page, to come up and present. Obviously, you've all signed this shirt for him um, just to remember tonight and to present him with his cap. Um, Chris Gunter, Chris. from UEFA um, and FIFA to commemorate the 100. I, I'm not sure whether you can look at them after. Um, those of you who are here in, or with the squad in 2016 and in the last squad um, for the games in November will know that we had a resident artist in terms of um, Owen Vaughan Williams. Um, not only a talented musician with his guitar and Johnny Cash songs, but Owen brought to life, I think, the success of 2016 with his portraits and images which he put on canvas. And I asked Owen if he could come up with something special for Chris um, to celebrate his 100th cap. And if you'd just like to hold help me as well, let's be careful. This is what Owen came up with. I think it's a fitting tribute and something you'll always remember that 100th cap. Um, that's what Owen has painted for you. Is 
Cheers, guys. Thank you. Get off me. Obviously, you watched the game on Saturday. It was a great win for Wales there in the Cardiff City Stadium. Yeah, most well, definitely. And it was great to see some changes made, but Wales was still competitive in that one. Yeah, and hopefully now Chris Gunter is a great achievement for him. Uh, 100th cap game, captain aside, and he captained as a leader as well. It's a great performance. Yeah, he really encapsulates what it means to be a Wales international as well. I think, I think he's mentioned that um, he, he's a fan. He's, he's one of us, uh, really. And, and it, sh it shows it's a great achievement um, to get that 100th cap. And it just shows how much the squad means to him and what playing for Wales means to him. And that's the ultimate honour. Playing for your country is the most important thing in your career, perhaps. And he, he surely means that. Well, Jordan, as we wait for the teams to come out, you know, have a quick run through of, of England's South Lem. Yeah, so uh, we've got Huber Graziak who starts, and then we've got CJ Egan Riley, we've got Gerald Quanash, Karamoko Dembele, Alex Robertson, Shola Shortiri, Louis Barry, and captaining Aaron Ramsey, Ethan Ingram, and Daniel Jeveson. So Aaron Ramsey, quite a familiar name for Wales, but obviously a completely different person. Do you want know, to tell us a bit more about the England captain? So, yeah, Aaron, Aaron Ramsey plays for Aston Villa, and Aston Villa, of course, produce a number of high-quality players, and he's, he's not the only Aston Villa player here today. So we've got Kari Chukunemaka, uh, and we've also got Louis Barry. So, of course, a lot of people will know who Louis Barry is because he scored the FA Cup goal of the round whilst playing for Aston Villa's well, academy team against Liverpool. So it just shows the players on show here today and Aaron Ramsey obviously captaining England today. Not the Aaron Ramsey that we all know and love for the Welsh national team, but one of the stars for the future and highly regarded. Great stuff. Thanks, Jordan. And it's, it's definitely heating up here. The referee's calling the players out. We're just about to get ready here at Lekwith. Uh, kick, kick off in just, just over five minutes here. And in terms of the Wales team, John, anyone in particular you think we should be keeping an eye out on this afternoon? Well, I'm only going to go off my uh, football manager experience, but I uh, managed Cameron Kengra Con Kengrave and uh, Ollie Ewing, and they turned out to be good players. So it'll be interesting to see whether they live up to uh, the football manager expectations. But it, there are some great players in there as well. Obviously, there's Charlie Savage, of course, son of Robbie Savage, and the, the name probably that a lot of people will be looking to is Keelan Williams. We've seen what his brother Nico Williams can do for the Welsh national team in such a quick amount of time. And of course, the Wales under 19s is what these players are looking forward to. That was what Nico Williams started with for Wales, and then we could be chatting for Keelan Williams' name in the not too distant future. Yes, I mentioned Ollie Wing there. He did captain the under 17s back in 2019 now when they qualified for the elite rounds of Leicester City. Midfielder's got some great experience to add to this squad, hopefully, and, and progress his own career as well. And it is a Keelan Williams, an exciting young talent there. He used to be with Liverpool now at Burnley. Obviously, well known uh, him, him and Nico are brothers fr from Kevin Mauer in Wrexham. So, uh, if you are watching from any of these areas, or let us know in the comments what you think of the game, where you're watching from, and we we'll shout out to some of the best ones. And we've just seen some of the substitutions come out here at Leckwith. Uh, Jordan, so in terms of the club pill drive, while we're waiting for the teams to come out, do you, do you want to give the fans a bit of insight of what you guys do in terms of the domestic game in particular? So Club Paldroid is a Welsh domestic website and it started in 2015 and really we were just looking to cover the leagues, the Cymru Premier and the leagues below that, the Welsh Premier Women's League, so the men and the women's game we usually just cover it and basically we cover the national teams as well um, and, and that's what we do, we just cover the domestic game to the best ability that we can. And here they come then, Wales coming out of the changing room just here at the halfway line and just out of your shot England are coming out of the other changing rooms just at the end of the same stand. What could be a capacity, two and a half thousand seat uh, stand here at Leckwith is empty due to the current Covid protocols. But don't get me wrong, there's an exciting game in store here this afternoon for the fans watching at home. It might be a Monday midday, but this could be a great chance for you to catch the team whether you're on your lunch break, multitasking at work, or you've got a day off for the Easter holidays. Make the most of, of this match as we have got live on the FAW Facebook and YouTube channels. The players line up near the halfway line now. We'll, we'll go through the anthems, starting off with the English National Anthem. 
and followed by my hen lad Vinadai. Please remain standing for the National Anthem of Wales. of my lad Renata used when Wales play against Hungary back the last game to qualify for UEFA Euro 2020 and the 19th of November 2019 it feels like a long time ago now Jordan doesn't it? Yeah and it's just a shame obviously one of the most proudest anthems in the world it's just a shame that we don't have a, a, a crowd here to sing it um, but obviously a proud rendition and the players gave a proud rendition there as well and like we said earlier, if you are watching on the stream at home, in the office, anywhere across the world, send us a comment. Let us know what the game, how the game's going so far, and we'll read out some of the best ones. So as the referees sort out the coin toss and some of the team photos, we just go over the starting lineups again. For Wales, it's Max Williams in goals. Keelan Williams, captain in the side of the full-back. Tom Davis, then the three Joneses of Harry Taylor. Sorry, Tom Davis said the two Joneses of Harry and Taylor Jones. Jay Williams, Chai Savage, Ollie Ewing of Leicester City, Brian Vigas, Joel Cottrell of Swansea City, and Chris Popov playing up front. Chris Popov playing a year younger, he's a 2004 born, whereas the rest of the majority of the squad are 2003. He's quite an exciting player, Jordan. He's top scorer in the Victory Shield last year. Could be one to uh, keep an eye on up front. Yeah, obviously he played for Manchester United as well, um, so he's one of those players you really want to have a look at as well, and obviously everyone watching this game will want to want to see how he gets on in this game, because he's such an exciting young talent. So we're just sorting out the coin toss here, as Keelan Williams runs back to his teammates. So the last time a, a Wales age group team played here, it was a two-all draw against Russia back in November 2019 as part of the Under-19s qualifying round. That team actually reached the elite round, which was unfortunately cancelled because of COVID. Rob Eddowes was in charge of that. Did you catch any of those games, Jordan? Yeah, so I was there for the last one against Poland at Rodney Parade, but um, it was a really exciting tournament and uh, it's a shame that it obviously didn't um, get played to a conclusion, but... It was a competition that I enjoyed seeing the likes of Nico Williams and Christian Norton play. 
great comment here on the YouTube page. When it's when is Cymru v England ever a friendly? No. <laughs> That's a great way to start this game. As both teams take the knee with the Football Association of Wales and the FA of England strongly opposing racism in all forms. England playing from left to right in their usual white kit, while Wales playing from right to left in the all red kit. As England get the game underway straight onto that left hand side, but uh, Keenan Williams straight into the game then as he goes out for the throw. Yeah, nice just putting an early marker onto the game. Jarrell Kwanza on the ball. Passes across to his centre back partner, CJ Egan Riley. Back in possession. It's an interesting start to this game. I mean, England seems to be playing a sort of 4 3 3 formation, but they, they spend the first five tens just figuring out what's, uh, how everyone's set up there. Yeah, obviously, Wales will, will try to match that as well, that 4 3 3 formation. Um, it seems like England might have the early bit of possession, obviously, kicking off with the ball. Um, and perhaps Wales might have to soak that in the early stages. But um, yeah, nice to see Keelan Williams put his mark on the game by clearing the ball out and no nonsense defending. Some comments coming in on the Facebook page. Simon Richards commenting about how well the Welsh boys sang the national anthem. Always good to hear some of this passed amongst the age group structures. And Emma Jones saying good luck because she's watching in Kevin Mauer, the, the home of Captain Keelan Williams. The ball goes out on the right hand side to Ingram. Plays it further down to Dembele. Dembele in possession, looking for a gap on that left hand side. Finds his teammate on the left hand side. He's going to cut in. Here's an early chance for England. Can they get a shot away? It's well dealt with. Who is forcing the play out wide, but it's still a threat out here. Great ball. Eventually, he's forced back to the captain, Ramsey. Plays it back into the centre of the park towards Kwanzaa. Yeah, it was a great ball from Dembele as well, and almost cut open the Welsh defence there. I think that Dembele could be a threat for Wales today, Jordan. He's, he's got quite a bit of first team experience for Celtic. Oh yeah, most definitely. Uh, he, he played in the Europa League, I believe, for Celtic, and it, it just shows what this kind of game this is. If senior players are representing their country today, as the ball goes out, he's yes, out, and is that the corner? Or is unlucky. He's a uh, good chase in there by Ryan Figgers. He's a bit unlucky as Kwanzaa was strong in possession and it goes out for a goal kick. Yeah, just on Dembele, so he's eligible for England, the Ivory Coast and Scotland, and he actually made his Scotland debut uh, for the under-16s against Wales, so a familiar face to perhaps some of these Wales players today. England look to play out to our left-hand side again, but it's intercepted by Williams. Played back, Jay Williams passes to Tom Davis. Looking out wide again for Ryan Vegas, but just over hit that ball, and it looks like that's something they're trying to do early on here. Where there's a plate on the left hand side, quite similar to England as well, as they're constantly looking for Louis Barry on the left flank. Yeah, and obviously you want to keep Louis Barry marked because we all know how good of a player he is from how he played against Liverpool's senior team. Um, but yeah, Wales seem like they're going to go down this left flank and they're trying to get the ball in the air too. In number nine, which is Ryan Vigors as well, so it just, it just shows that perhaps a contrast in style of play here, but England nice in possession. One familiar name you might see on the team sheet today is a certain Charlie Savage. He's, he's got the flowing blonde locks as well of his father. And do, you, do you want to let the fans know who we're talking about? Yeah, so Charlie Savage is, is a midfielder for Manchester United. And of course, Robbie Savage um, was obviously on the books in the early stages of his, his career at Man United before going on to Crew Alexandra and then playing for the likes of Blackburn and Birmingham City. So it's nice to see a number of players that have got family links as well. There's also uh, Joel Cottrell, who's starting for Wales today, and he's part of a football family. So his cousin, Jordan Cottrell, played for Wales C. And, of course, his other cousin, David Cottrell, made a number of appearances for Wales at the senior level at the Euros. It's Williams. Looks to flick it on to pop off, chasing on that right-hand side. But England settle things down in possession here. Looking early, playing the 4-3-3 shape, England, I think they'll definitely be looking at using Barry on this left-hand side here as he gets the ball again. He drives it towards Taylor Jones, Barry in possession, he's a threat early on, but well dealt with by Taylor Jones as it goes out for the England corner. 
much needed block there from Taylor Jones as well because Barry looked dangerous there. But a nice well-timed challenge in the box and you've got to make those at the right time. It's the first corner of the match here. England. Looks like it'll be Alex Robertson to take the Manchester City midfielder. Got the option short as the ref just just asks him to reset the ball here. Don't know if we're watching ground force or football in that corner, but the referee's now happy with the positioning. Robertson knocks it in deep, just slightly too deep there. As Wales managed to clear the lines ever so slightly, and England can they find a quick option here? Well dealt with that corner there by Wales as well. That nice shape and uh, they stuck to their man well there. That's always a threat, isn't it? The early set piece. If you're not on, if you're not switched on and on the ball early on, you, you don't want to concede an early goal there, do you? No, and, that, and that's that's the thing as well. Perhaps if you concede a goal from a set piece, then it opens you up and you perhaps feel vulnerable uh, at the back. But it, Wales dealt really well with that as well, and also Taylor Jones to intercept that corner too. Great play there to switch the play to Kilo and couldn't quite find Joel Cottrell there up top, but. Chris Popov looks a threat in there and close the ball down, but it's calmly dealt with by Jarrell Kwanza as he goes out for a Wales throw. So quick pass in there by, by Wales in the centre of the park, and it's good to see they can do that one touch, and they're not panicking on the ball at these early stages, are they? Yeah, they're just allowing England to have a bit of possession in the early stages, but now they're just managing to get into their own heart, getting into the attacking half now, and it's all about getting into the right positions and having their own attacking opportunities. England look to drive the ball forward from from the back. Goes to Ingram. Tries to find Dembele in the right hand side, but couldn't quite get that final ball away. And it'd be interesting to see. I mean, they've got to have to take the chances. Say right? going by going by some of these early stages in England. England are looking threatening in attack. Wales are missing eight or nine players from the original squad that was announced due to injury, but at the same time, that's a great chance for some, some of these other players to step up then. Yeah, most definitely. If you just... Oh, good clearance there from the goalkeeper, Max Williams. And, and yeah, um, when players are out, you want players to step up to the plate when they're missing, and that's the same for a club level, international level. And if one gets on the score sheet today or puts in a good defensive midfield performance or gets a goal or an assist, they put their names into the hat for the under-19 qualifiers as well. As you mentioned earlier, it's the first under-18s match in more than 20 years. The last game was against Latvia back in 2001. Neville Southall was the manager. and it, uh, The team did... Uh, it was Jermaine Easter in the team, the only... Mm that ended up being a full Wales international but John it's something you picked up on earlier from that game compared to this one yeah I, I can't give full credit <laughs> I have to say that Mark Pittman actually pointed it out as well but obviously because um, most of these players are born after 2000 no player was actually born when <laughs> that last fixture ever took place so it just shows how uh, time goes on and sometimes you lose track of the years but um yeah, a lot of young players on talent on show here today and interesting to see the talent on show as well. And the reason for the formation of this new team is due to a new UEFA tournament that will be starting over the next year in order to bridge the gap between the East 17s and, and the 19s UEFA tournaments to make sure the players get enough game time and international experience ahead of going into that senior squad. So it's a great opportunity. Going forward, the under-18s team will be managed by Marty Jones, but Rob Edwards take cha takes charge today, the under-19s manager, as a number of these players will be stepping up into a setup, like we mentioned earlier, for next season's UEFA tournament. Yeah, and it's just about that transition, perhaps, as well as that Rob Edwards is obviously in charge of this one. So he want, he want to see a few players, and he might pick a few players to go in into his team as well. But I also understand that uh, Paul Bowden will be watching as well, the under-21s manager. Um, I, I believe he said in his post-match conference. Um, so it might be a few that make the smooth transition to the under-21s team as well. If they put in a good show in today. Savage looks to drive the ball forward, but he's dispossessed there by Robertson. The ball eventually goes back to Grashik. Cottrell 
once again, it's Aaron Ramsey. It's, it's hard saying Aaron Ramsey of England, but that's who's captain in their side today, the centre of the park. So look to play it long. Really interesting to see as well, both goalkeepers, uh, both not really well both really comfortable on the ball as well there's a few attacking players that are trying to close them down and both goalkeepers today are just getting rid of the ball as if they weren't even being challenged so it just shows that sometimes you have to be fearless um at this level and they've, they've shown that already it's a nice comment on the facebook stream here good luck to keelan for block keelan another local lad doing the village of head mouth proud and that's from his former club kevin alvian fc Keelan used to go to uh, Iskori Wabon in Wrexham and started off with the Wales in the under 12s and the 13 set up with the trust but there could be a chance for Wales here as Popov looks to drive forward from the right hand side Popov takes the shot but it's blocked by a sturdy England foot there and goes out for the Welsh throw well blocked here from England as well uh, seems like they're defending really well but they've also got a high line been promising from both sides so far. It looks like we've got an exciting game in store. Ten minutes in here. Yeah, pop off there as well. Just, just almost to the shot. Obviously, it was a low shot block. But if he could just curl that a bit higher, he might have got a shot on target rather than a block from an England defender. Jay Williams in possession. Jay now plays for Fulham. Originally from Merthyr, went to Cavartha High School. His father is also the Exmouth Town manager. So, Wales look to put the ball in, but cleared up once again by England as Dembele picks it up just on the edge of his box. So, England look to attack there, but great sliding challenge for Droll Kostra. And that's good to see an attacking player putting his foot on the line and, and thwarting that England counter attack a bit. Yeah, and it looks like England were going to go on the counter-attack, obviously, from Wales having that, that cross in. And um, Cottrell made the much-needed tackle in the midfield, and it just goes out for throwing to allow a bit of a breather for the players to get back into position. If you are one of the 2,000 people joining us on the FAW streams here, pronounced a uh, uh, as you're watching Wales against England under-18s at Lecco Stadium in Cardiff, where... Just over 12 minutes gone here, and it's a goal less as Chris Popov looks for that ball on the right hand side, but just slightly over hit and ends up at the feet of Hubert Rajik. Yeah, if it's just a little bit hit softer, it might have found his way to Popov, but it shows that Wales are trying to make a few opportunities now, and good to see them in the attacking third. England look to attack. Barry couldn't quite find a way through then. He's certainly going to be one to look out for this afternoon as he's played senior football mm. for Aston Villa. Yeah, that team that played in the FA Cup against Liverpool. Yeah, so that, that's the one that we all know um, because so many people have watched that game just for the intrigue of it. Obviously, Aston Villa's academy against Liverpool seniors in the historic FA Cup, the oldest cup competition in world football. Um, and yeah, Barry, he's, he's played for the likes of West Bromwich Albion as academy and he's also at Barcelona's academy. So, He's a very strong prospect as well, and, and, and one perhaps we, we've looked at the likes, and I'm not comparing him to Mbappe and Haaland, but it just, it just shows that um, some of these players we could be watching here today go on, to, go on to stardom and become multi-million pound footballers. Harry Jones, looking for some options here on the left-hand side. Finds Vegas, eventually just pop up, he's got Williams on the right-hand side. Williams looking to attack, he's got some options, knocks the ball in, but just over hit, over Vegas' head. But once again, positive play from Rob Edwards' side here, and God, where's it up for this, aren't they? Yeah, and it's, it's interesting to see that they're playing crosses over, so, so sometimes you're on the ball to feet. But um, a few of crosses now have just gone over Vegas' heads, and he's, he's nearly gone on to those attacking opportunities and uh, Wales are probably in control at the moment now obviously England started off well and had a few opportunities through Barry uh, and also had a corner kick but what Wales with the attacking momentum now Max Williams out 
the Salford City goalkeeper really owns that ball there. Williams to Savage. Calms things down as the ball eventually ends up with Tom Davis on the left hand side. Davis telling his teammates to play as calm and it's what they want from these boys. They want to enjoy their possession, make the most of it and slowly build some chances but it's eventually given away then. It could be a chance for England on the edge of the box here. It's Robertson. Robertson plays it out wide to Dembele. Dembele looking in the box, dinks it in and it could be a chance for England. Robertson on the edge of the box goes for the shot but eventually it goes out wide for the throw in as I think the referee's eventually given the free kick for Louis Barry being offside there, but that, that's what England have got, isn't it? They're going to look for those half chances. They can, they can create chances around the edge of the box, and we just need to be alert for those. Yeah, and it's interesting to see Taylor Jones head about away as well again. I've really been impressed with him in the opening stage. He's, he's, he's showing maturity beyond his, uh, his age here. He's a command and defender. And as, as you touched upon it, it's great to see players give instructions to their teammates as well because when you've got someone like Rob Edwards watching, they want, he wants to see leaders uh, because those young players could instruct people. We've seen it before. Ethan Anthony gives instructions to senior players way older than him, and that's what you want to see. Pop off. Physical presence here. Born in Cardiff. Moved to Clenethy and then moved to Manchester when he was eight years old. It's an exciting prospect. The uh, playing a year above his usual age group here today. As England play, play around with the ball in their box, look, looking to drive things forward here. It's Dembele on the right hand side, dispossessed by Harry Draws. No foul given from the referee. Vigas plays into Cottrell. Eventually dispossessed, but cleaned up by Ollie Ewing. Plays it back to Williams. Ewing turns and looks forward. No gaps in the England shape at the moment, but eventually wins a free kick there. It's a great setup here, Jordan, is it? Just on the left hand side, we can see Cardiff City Stadium, the usual home of the senior team. and what great motivation for some of these younger players here today. They've been staying in the same facilities as well as the senior team, training in the same place, so it's, it's great for their ambitions. Yeah, that's, that's the thing, is that as an international footballer at age grade level, you always have ambitions of playing for the senior team, I imagine, as well. And obviously this ground is held, Europa League qualifiers. Oh, And it's a penalty. That's an early penalty for Wales and a great chance. Here's Chris Popov, that... It really came out on nowhere, didn't it? A bit of a long ball, and this could be a chance for Wales to take the lead here. Yeah, and he's done well there to earn the penalty. And that's a great yeah. little play there. It's, it's Keelan Williams on the right hand side, really sort of starting that attack. But uh, what can they do here? Yeah, it's just that ball over the top, and then Popov managed to get control of the ball and then earns the penalty. It looks like it's Ryan Vegas taking the pen. And it's saved Ooh. as Hubert Gratrick gives England the lifeline there. Yeah, um, it's a low penalty and Gratrick is, is guessed rightly there. Um, perhaps a bit more power, but sometimes penalty takers want to go for placement rather than power. And Vigas has gone there. But at least, at least there's a shot on target and it shows that Wales are creating uh, the opportunities to get in those positions. I think Wales will be really gutted by that. But it's a big test of character. How do they pick themselves up? They've been playing well so far. Go give them a chance. Unfortunately, just failed to take it. But let's see how they respond to that now. Yeah, and that's probably going to motivate Popov as well because Popov has perhaps been Wales' best player so far in this one, earning that penalty and also being that creative handful. He's making a great relationship with Keelan Williams down down that side. It's unfortunately, there Vegas he he went for the bottom right hand corner, but it was well read by uh, Krachik. A solid save as well. He didn't give much of a chance for a rebound or anything at all, did he? No, and that's, that's the thing is the goalkeeper is you, you don't want to palm it into trouble or anything. You want to save it and you want to gavel the ball and then move your team upfield. There you go. England look to attack. It's thwarted once again by Harry Jones. It's a steady back three line here for Wales in terms of Harry Jones, Jay Williams and the number five, Taylor Jones. Williams looks to play it wide to another Williams. This time Keelan, the captain, and a cheeky little nutmeg there. 
by the boy from Kevin Maur. Figures. Williams once again in oh, sorry, probably this Chris Popper this time in possession. Plays it safely back to his goalkeeper. Yeah, I really like how Popov is just spraying the ball back there. He's playing with so much confidence at the moment as well, and he's also showing a lot of skill on the ball. He's a very busy player, isn't he? He's looking mm. for that ball, he's wanting it, and that's what Rob Edwards will want in his players. Yeah, just that fearlessness, especially at his age as well. Obviously, he played um, above his age grade level as well, so it just shows the talent that he has to be considered for this fixture. He's played out once again to Tom Davis. Savage. Back to Davis, driving it forward. He's got Vigas in front of him. He couldn't quite get the ball away there to Vigas. It's especially cleaned up by Kwanzaa. He's now driving forward. This centre back's on a mission here, but couldn't quite find Dembele on that right hand side. Really liking how the Wales fullbacks as well are not afraid to go forward as well. We, we've seen that with the, the national team, with the fullbacks, with the senior national team, the fullbacks go forward and they want to get involved, the likes of Connor Roberts and, uh, and Davis and Norrington Davis. Fearless going forward and we're getting that from the under 18s as well. Free kick thing, they look to take it quickly, but I think the refs are rolling ball there perhaps. Just a quick look at the corners then. Jared Price saying it's a great start for Tyler Jones, loving his long passing, his, thinks it might be hurting England during this game. It's a few comments as well, Charlie Crow is liking what he's seeing so far from, from the 11 boys on the pitch here for Wales. Dunbarely, couldn't quite find that ball there and goes out for the Wales goal kick. Nice to see how Wales reacted as well to that penalty miss. Is that it doesn't seem like their heads have dropped either. In this, they're still confident in possession. England are perhaps getting more into their attacking third now, but Wales still confident on the ball and still want to carry the ball forward and get that opening goal. Williams launches it, so on the left flank, but goes out for the England throw. So, Jordan, a big game for the Wales senior team tomorrow as well, the Czech Republic. It's the second qualifying match of the campaign, but it's off the back of a great win against Mexico on Saturday night. Yeah, and that, that's, that's the thing, as we touched upon before kick-off, is there was a few changes made. I think it was the, wasn't the same 11 against Belgium, so have some of those players have played their way into starting tomorrow. You can watch that game live from quarter to eight. Only there. Sky Sports, R.S. Pedereka, Savage. Testing little ball there, looking for Popov, and it's spilt, spilt by Grashik, but it's picked up by the English back line. Ramsey. Looking to play the ball forward, and eventually gets to Dembele, but foot in by Tom Davis there, and Dembele just fails to keep it in there as it goes out for the Welsh throw. Mm. Yeah, really been impressed as well um, by Tom Davis. He's been quite assured down this flank, and notably, he's a Whitchurch High School student as well. And we all know the most fa one of the most famous students to go to Whitchurch High School is uh, Wales' all-time record goal scorer Gareth Bale, and he obviously started as a left back as well. And he's on the ball now, um, so a great, perhaps one of the schools to create sporting excellence because, of course, they obviously produced Sam Warburton as well as the British and Art Irish Lions captain. First caller. For Tom Davis is actually this match, so long ever he had a Tom, and hopefully it'll be a good performance for the remainder of the match as well. Mm. If you are watching from anywhere in the world, really, just got to, over two and a half thousand people currently tuned in. Good to see you all on this Monday afternoon as Ryan Vegas looks to find Charlie Sage, but couldn't quite dink it over the body of England captain Aaron Ramsey. Really like that from Vigas as well. Is that sometimes as a striker, your main job is just to have shot on target and get goals. But he's putting a sliding challenge in there and trying to win the ball. So he's trying to carry his team forward and just shows that he's just trying to make a mark on this game as well. He's, he's picked himself up from that penalty miss and um, yeah, he's, he's get, getting a bit more confidence now. I think it's fair to say we're just nearing the halfway stage of the, of the opening 45 and. It's been very little to divide both teams. It's been end-to-end -end exciting. 
apart from the missed penalty, there's not been many clear-cut chances, really. No, and, and that's the thing, is that it, it's not a boring nil-nil either. It's, it's both teams are in the middle of a park and they're, they're trying to create something. Perhaps Wales, England in possession. It's a chance for England here. It's knocked in, and it, oh, Ooh. it's Louis Barry came close there to giving England the lead. He had the space, but just for he couldn't quite turn his body in the shape there to hit the ball on target. But, but that's what they've got in, in the likes of Barry. You know, these chances are going to come for them if they if they keep on being patient. Yeah, and as we say, the win must have separated them, and that's probably England's most meaningful uh, opportunity there as well. And if he keeps that just under the crossbar, that's a good shot on target, and it's forcing Max Williams into trouble. But fortunately for Wales, it's gone over the bar. And that's good backing once again by Chris Popov. It's a physical presence up top for Wales, and he's hungry again, but couldn't quite get the control there to, to keep the ball in play. Yeah, Popov is really making his mark on this game as well. He's, he's getting the ball, he's tackling the ball, he wants to get into possession, and he's really impressed me so far. Ingram on this right hand side looks for Dembe. That's a great little ball to the Celtic winner, but. It was a free kick for England, Harry Jones. I, th I thought he dealt with it there, but I think the push on Dembele is back, and it's a, it's a good set-piece opportunity here for England. They've not had many of these yet. They, they had the first corner early on, a couple of free kicks further back, but this is a threatening position for them now. Yeah, and that's the thing is that we've touched too early on in the game. So you really don't want to concede from set-pieces and early on. Obviously, we're halfway now through the first half, and it's, it's all about being organised on this, and... I'm seeing a lot of leadership in that, trying to stick to your man, man marking, zonal marking. Um, but Dembele's on this set piece and he's Dembele, been in danger. Dembele of Celtic and Robertson of Man City and it's under 80s level. That's the type of play you want on, on your free kick, isn't it? This is whipped in by Dembele, but dealt well led by Williams and it's eventually hoofed down the pitch there by the Welsh defence. Yeah, you just have to look at the teams that some of the England players are aligned to. You've got the likes of Manchester United, Manchester City, Aston Villa, West Brom. They're all, they're all producing great young players and they, it's a platform to the senior team. And Obviously, their coaches might be watching today to keep an eye on how they're doing for the under-18s. Barry on the edge of the box with Villa. Just plays it back there on the left-hand side. England playing this ball as Barry once again in possession. Can't quite find their way past Williams as such, but the ball's eventually driven in and it's Jay Williams, the centre back. No mistake there as he, he clears the lines well and it's Vigors. There could be a chance here for Wales. It's 3v3 Vigors. Looks a pop about when it couldn't quite find that ball through. And those are the chances you feel that Wales really need to take. And a bit unfortunate, did well to get the play up there quick and a little unlucky with that final pass there. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of that as well. We're seeing Wales dispossess England in the middle of the park and trying to carry the ball into the final third as well. And it's, it's nice to see that, is that they're trying to pick up on loose balls, they're trying to earn possession themselves, they're, they're not just allowing England to have it, and they're getting the ball and getting it into the positions. Talk about getting the ball, it's Barry, he's been hungry for it here, and it's headed away by Harry Jones. Only so far as the edge of the box is Dembele. Dembele, the fancy footwork from the Celtic winger, but... Eventually, Savage cools things down there as he plays the ball to White to Vigas and it goes down the pitch towards Joel Cottrell. So 28 minutes gone here in Lequa Stadium in Cardiff. It's Wales nil, England nil. If you are just tuning in, Wales probably fair to say with the best chance of the game in terms of a penalty, but Ryan Vigas' effort was saved. And well saved as well by Hubert Gracic. England have also had their fair share of chances, but it's, it's goalless here at the moment. And uh, Louis Barry on the edge of the box, Barry, but he's dispossessed well there by Oli Ewing, who drives the ball down the pitch. Not quite a free kick, well dispossessed there by Robertson. Great tackle. Robertson back on the ball again. Plays it out wide to Ingram. Show the short tyre on the ball here. Plays it up. England on the edge of the box. Dembele, what can he do here? Dembele finds a little gap, but Jay Williams fills that gap. No issues whatsoever. 
Yeah, Dan Belly just complicating things a little bit there. Perhaps just take your first time and have an opportunity and get a shot on target. But um, Wales have held firm there to deny Dan Belly from having a clear route at goal. Name there, some of you may have been familiar with, was a shoulder short tyre. Recently had a Europa League appearance for Man United. Yeah, he was, he was the youngest ever player for Manchester United to play in European uh, competitions as well. So it just shows how highly regarded he is at Manchester United, an academy that has produced a number of good players and given opportunities to players such as Rashford and Greenwood have come through their academy. And of course, Shaw Tyre came on for Mason Greenwood. Um, so he's, he's playing in this match and he was playing in the Europa League not that long ago. Here is the number 10 back in possession, driving things forward. Finds Barry on the left hand side. Barry cuts her in, takes a strike, and it eventually goes out for a corner. I think that was off the off the head of Harry Jones and He's had a busy opening half hour, hasn't he? But he's dealt with things well so far. Yeah, and he's, he's been really commanding as well. And as we want to see from some of these defenders is that as a young defender, um, you don't really see many players get senior debuts as a, def as a defender. But he, he's shown maturity, and, and that's, that's what we want from him, is that he's commanding his defenders to go into positions, but he's also putting himself about and putting himself in the right positions. Ball goes in and it's well dealt with by Max Williams there. The Saltwood City goalkeeper makes no mistake. Originally from Welshpool, attended Welshpool High and played for Wrexham and Shrewsbury Town before signing for Saltwood. Yeah, and he's been really assured as well so far. He's anything that has come at him, he's gathered it correctly as well, carefully, and no no pressure on him whatsoever. I mentioned that he was really comfortable on the ball, clearing it when the England players were trying to chase him. Rhys Jones with a comment, Jay Williams, some centre half and he's had a good performance so far as he sprays it out to the left hand side. Lucky for Keelan wins. It's a great first touch by the Welsh captain. Williams drawing for he's got some numbers on his left hand side. Cottrell back to Popper. Pop first shot from distance, but flies over the bar. But that's what we like to see from Wales is confident forward attack in play and those chances. You know, one of those could go in and it could be one nil Wales. Unfortunately, not then, but. It's good to see the chances being made. Yeah, and a, a nice shot there from Popov as well. Nice left-footed effort, and if he just keeps that down. And it's interesting to see that Wales perhaps are adopting a fluid front three. I'm seeing Popov, Cottrell and Vigas just alternating on where they go. Sometimes Vigas will go in the centre, and then Cottrell will go in the centre. And Pop Popov has mainly stayed out wide. But, but they, are, they are alternating. They are trying to get into different positions to try and unlock the England defence. Mr. John Dory watching on the stream, seeing so he can see his house from the cameras. So, <laughs> don't know if he lives near the Az at the stadium, but proud are to you, John. Harry Jones, the Swansea City centre back. And his Wales debut at the end of 15 oh, against Wales. It's a chance for Wales. Yeah, and it's oh, a great save out. by Williams. And Wales just failed to clear their lines. And I think it was Jebison, I Jebison think. Yeah, with Jebison. a shot there. But a reactive save from Williams. And that gave him a lot of confidence, wasn't it? Yeah, and, that, and that, that's the thing is that that's probably England's most meaningful opportunity now. And Max Williams has assured himself by making that, that save close range chance and a uh, bit sloppy in possession there to give England that opportunity. But Max Williams gets his defence out of trouble in. It makes a great save. 33 minutes gone here at Leckwith. England looking for the holes in the well shape and sprayed across the left hand side to Louis Barry. Barry cuts it in, that's a chance, but just out of the reach of Daniel Jebison there. He's really putting himself about as well. Um, I believe he was born in Canada and he had uh, two goals in the FA Youth Cup for Sheffield United uh, Academy and also he spent time on loan this season at Vanarama National League side, North Side Chorley of course had a great FA Cup run this season too. Talking about the Canadians, they'll be visiting Leckwith in just 11 days time, I think it's a week Friday, as their women's team will be playing 
And Jenna McGranger's first match in charge of the Welsh national women's team. And that's on Friday 9th of April. Kick-off at 6 o'clock and Granger will be announcing the squad on Wednesday lunchtime. So keep your eye out on that and support the women as they start preparations for the 2023 sorry, FIFA Women's World Cup qualifying campaign. In terms of Club Pill, Drodney must have been keeping a close eye on Granger's appointment. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's really an in interesting appointment uh, as, as well. as Obviously, is that, it's going to be a bit of change because obviously Gemma's going to bring in her own philosophies, her own ideologies. It'll be interesting to see the kind of team that Gemma calls up as well because it's, there's been some problems in regards to some of the players that haven't been able to play uh, first-team football due to Covid decimating seasons but um, a lot of the players have really excelled themselves at uh, women's Super League level as well I believe and Harry James uh, the midfielder for Reading is one of the most uh, tackles in the league so it shows how the quality is getting as well and obviously and Harry and Jess are obviously off to the States soon as well and it just shows how the Welsh national women's team has grown over the years as well so many players are now playing at the highest level of English football as well, and, and you're seeing some young players as well who have put themselves into positions. Yeah, it should be an exciting game for the women's team, playing against Canada on the 9th, and then Denmark in the Cardiff City Stadium, just across the road on Tuesday the 12th. Good opposition to play against as well, I think. Both, both teams, Canada and Denmark, both been in, in World Cups as well, and one of the last games I remember watching the Wales women's team down here was against New Zealand, who actually played in a women's World Cup, and Wales actually won that game. So it, it just shows the quality of the Welsh women's national team, that they can get results in some of the teams, and a good, a good workout, and I'm really intrigued to see that game. Yes, yeah, so hopefully it's exciting times for national team football across the board in Wales here. So back to the present days... Charlie Savage going to play the ball back eventually ends up with Vigas back to Savage looking to switch the play there that's a cute little ball into Chris Popov just like the overhit as it ends up in the arms of Gratschik yeah England a bit more in possession now as well they, they're having more of the ball Wales, Wales had their attacking spells I imagine they, they've had a few shots, shots but now uh, England are in control of the first half at the moment and uh, it's all about not conceding now as well because we're ten minutes away from half time. It's Barry in possession. Barry looks to fling it, and I thought there for a Jordan you'd give it the commentator's curse. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully for Wales, it goes just over the bar. Yeah, ni nice curling effort as well. He he's put himself in those positions a few times as well. He's he's cut outside to the flank, and then he's tried to curl an effort in as well. But fortunately for Wales, a few of these curling shots are going over the bar, and they're, they're not testing William so far. Just a pause in play here as Rob Edders makes them also just a, just a couple of conversations with the players. But on the whole, I think he'd be quite pleased so far. Yeah, most de definitely is the Wales have shown that they can get into attacking positions and we have to remember that this, this England team has a number of players who have played with their senior team. Um, uh, this is a team that are serial winners. They, they playing good competitions and obviously one of the most things is that England under 17s were World Cup champions under now Swansea City manager Steve Cooper so it just shows that this England are a top side and Wales are holding their own against a team full of quality. Battling Wales here so far but also playing some good football so it's, it's good to see for the fans tuning in live from home. Nice link of play there. Short from tire. Great little play there from the Man City midfielder. Yeah, Ingram and Dembele are trying to get a bit, a bit similar to how Popov and Williams are for Wales. Ingram and Dembele are just making a little bit of a relationship down that side there, trying to open up the Wales defence. Played across the back here to Egan Riley and his teammate Kwanzaa. Quite physical, these two centre backs, and they easily, it's fair to say, probably the, the two biggest players on the pitch, except obviously the English goalkeeper as well. So it'll be a, t it's a tough battle for Popov up there, but he's dealing well with it so far. It's an England throw in, but someone's shoes need tying. <laughs> 
Ollie Ewing gets back up on his feet and the referee wheels play on. Yeah, Wales just needs to get a foothold into this game at the moment because they're allowing England so much possession in this now and it's, it's important that they try and soak up that pressure and, and don't concede. Um, they were getting into attacking positions but it's been a bit quiet in the last 10 minutes. And the strength and depth will be key as well for both sides and I believe off the top of my head I think it's unlimited subs for this game as well, the friendly match at the age groups level. So. England have got that strength and death and be interested to see how the, how the Welsh subs step up to that if, if they're given game time as well. Yeah, and of course, with, with this game being a friendly as, as well, it is, obviously there's pride at stake because it's, it's Wales versus England, but um, it's more of a case of players getting minutes as well as that they're, they're playing at a club level and um, the, ca the academy system it, in football has been a bit different this season. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting to see what kind of substitutes are made perhaps at half-time where there's been agreements that you'll have 45 minutes and the other player will have 45 minutes. Um, but, but yeah, inter interesting to see and ho hopefully not too many because we'll have to keep on top of every single sub. Just less than five minutes to go here in the first half. Assuming there is no injury time and to be fair, serious way as being learned, it's been quite a clean game so far. Yeah, and with friendly matches as well, you don't really see really many yellow cards, and unfortunately we haven't had any yellow cards so far. Captain Ramsey looks to play the ball for a short tyre. Tries to dink it over the top there, but couldn't quite find the run of Jebson. It's an easy one for Williams in goals. Davis battled onto the ball by Dembele. Sort of bird, uh, it's not a bad Welsh debut there for Tom Davis, isn't it? It's his first Wales call up and he's up against a Champions League player. Yeah, and that, that just shows as well is that um, Cardiff City's academy has, has been a bit successful this season. They're better results this season, they're, they're performing well, and of course, former Wales international Steve Morrison's the under 23s manager there. So it's, it's a smooth transition from academy football to the under 23s um, at Cardiff City as well, and I'm, I'm sure that for those watching, from Cardiff City, they'll be impressed so far um, in what they've seen from Tom Davis and of course the Welsh fans watching as well. This ball goes out for the Welsh throw, they're going to build it up to the park here and figures battling for possession, eventually ends with Popov, plays it back to Ewing, Ewing drives it far, he's got options on the right hand side here, Williams goes into the box, Williams he's got a chance, he's in the post! And that's a great chance for Wales, Keelan Williams on the right hand side, great vision by Ewing to find him there and Wales once again unfortunate not to be in front here. Yeah, yeah I think they've still that shot hit the post as well, but it was pinballing as well. Perhaps if, if Wales play just as a bit more quicker to react to that, then uh, it could be 1 0. But a great opportunity there from Williams. And here they are attacking on the right hand side again. It's pop up this time, and that's a strong challenge there. I can't quite see who it is in the England shirt, but did well there. It's a risky one, always sliding in the box, but. A calm collective challenge by Callum Doyle as it goes out for the, I think it's the first Welsh corner of the match. Yeah, I think so as well. And it's interesting to see Popov in, involved there again as well. Perhaps not a penalty kick, but similar to position to where he earned it as well. And he's, he's been a real danger for Wales down that side. 43 minutes gone. Wales about to take the first corner. Just knocked it. It's a chance. Mm. You know, couldn't quite connect to it there. Taylor Jones, the centre back. He, he had the space, he had to die for it a bit and just edges past his near post there and in the last few minutes Wales will be, will they be kicking themselves a bit for not taking on these chances or has it been a case of well worked and a bit of bad luck? Well I, I, I say perhaps both, um, Wales are making the opportunities now, We've, I said that they were a bit quiet and England were having no possession but it's, it's very strong into the first half and that, that's, that's what you want is that if you can get a goal just before the break then it gives you so much confidence going into the break e even if it's a friendly match and I think the art of diving head is, is uh, it's, it's well, in, well truly alive right now because Taylor Jones nearly scored a one. On the opposite end of the pitch now is Louis Barry, Louis Barry drives it forward and it's well blocked there by Jay Williams as Keelan, Keelan Williams clears the lines and Popov looks to muscle it through there, but Egan Riley just a bit too strong for him. And these last three or four minutes have been a bit topsy turvy, hasn't it? 
Yeah, that's the, that's the thing, Jay Williams. They're making a crucial block, and that's what the Wales defenders are doing. They're, they're closing down the England players so they can't have a clear route on goal, and then the attacking players are getting into some great positions. And, and barely to Jervison can quite find short tyre there. But England have got to throw in some good territory here in the closing stages of the first half. So Wales missed the penalty, hit the post. A couple of chances why they might be kicking themselves not to get a not to get the goal, but it's been a great performance so far against against an England side. And England credits them as well. They're one of the strongest teams in the immediate, intermediate age groups over the years. They've won World Cups, European Championships. So Rob Ed has been proud of his performance of his side's performance so far, I think. Yeah, most most definitely, and and they really impressed them, sir, Rob Edwards, and they could get stick a claim in the under 19s team, and as mentioned, perhaps the under 21s as well. England look to play a shot, and Harry Jones gets a foot in there and wins the free kick to just slow down that England attack. Really impressed with how Wales have dealt with England set pieces as well. Is, is that they have dealt with them so well by getting into positions and earning a free kick there, and it's probably going to be the last real chance of the half unless Wales can make something from directly from this free kick. But really impressed with how they've dealt with it because there are some great set piece takers uh, in the England ranks. One minute of injury time here at Leckwith. As Max Williams looks to take some, look, puts the ball down for the free kick. Plays it down the left hand side, but just out of the reach of Ryan Vigors. It's Ramsey, the England captain. Looks to settle things down, plays it back into his own box. And that's it, as the ref blows up for half time. It's currently Wales nil, England nil. Chances for both sides, but I think it's fair to say Wales have had the best chances so far. A missed penalty for Ryan Vigors around 20 minutes in. Keelan Williams, unfortunate to hit the post. And Taylor Jones just seen his head a glance wide of the near post and plenty of positives for Rob Edwards in his half-time speech. And, Jordan, what do you make of that half so far? Yeah, I'd say Wales are probably the better team in that, in that first half, creating all of the better opportunities. And whenever Max Williams has, has been called upon, he, he's dealt with it. He made a great save to deny Jefferson uh, earlier on. And w Wales have had the opportunities. And we, we do speak about whether Wales... Um, will rue those missed chances and it'll be interesting to see if, if many changes are made uh, to try and break break the deadlock but um, the, the players who are playing on the field right now for Wales they've put in a really good shift and playing against England a good team at age levels always feels like you're going into a bit of a gulag but credit <laughs> to the Welsh boys they have done great here and if you grab a cup of tea grab a bit of lunch we'll be back in just around 10 minutes as we get into some videos just showing some of the work the FAW does Start with a post-match interview from Chris Gunter after his 100th cap in a 1-0 win against Mexico on Saturday. I asked you what you would think yesterday, what you'd think when you went onto the pitch today, so what were your thoughts? I'm not sure. The, 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 probably the, not the hardest part, but the one that got me the most was probably the on the bus, I think, when I had my music on. was um, yeah. The, I mean, the amount of messages I've had the last day is um, you know the, the amount of love and and support from <clears throat> far and wide is you know it, I, I've said before it, it doesn't make a lot of sense but you know I, I know to a lot of people how much it, it means to them and how happy they are for me and that's that's the one that that gets me you personally pleased for myself and pride of course but it's more you know how pride other people are and yes yeah, so it's, <clears throat> it's an unbelievable night I was thinking before the game you know, try and enjoy it. Once you're on the pitch, you're hoping then of of getting a win, uh, a clean sheet. Um, the one in Albania was was a great night, but ultimately it, it, it didn't feel like in the end because because we lost. So um, I thought I thought to a man tonight that the, the team was was outstanding. It's a difficult one with with the game on on Wednesday and a, and a huge one on. On Tuesday um, against a very good team, it's, it's easy to sort of think it's a friendly and stuff. But no, I thought <coughs> it went as as well as as well as it could. It doesn't normally go like that. Um, and living living a dream that I I've never dreamt that it was probably the best way to put it in. You know, playing for a special 
group of people and it, it means you know I've said before it means everything to me and I'm you know so so proud yeah it could sometimes can be after the, the Lord Mayor's show but it wasn't you won uh, kept a clean sheet yeah I mean you played a real captain's part because I mean you can hear in, in the stadium now with no crowd but obviously you, you were coaching Johnny Williams through the game as well so I mean you really took on that responsibility I think tonight didn't you yeah and, I mean it was tough we had you know in, in the wing back positions to you know two of our probably most attacking players and um, you know they're doing something that they're not they're not normally you know asked to do I thought they were they were fantastic uh, and it's, it wasn't against a, a team that we're probably in the mindset of it's just a friendly. You could tell that you play a team like Mexico with some very good players and, and their attitude towards the game, it, it, it's not a friendly. Um, and, and rightly so, you turn up for your country, it should never be any different to any other game. Um, but yeah, if there's, if there's ever a time where you can you can help players through, um, but it, the easy part is, is giving information on the pitch. It, they're the ones that, that do it, so <clears throat> I think they all deserve huge credit I think they're pleased to, to be a part of a, a special night and yeah I'm I'm super thankful for them that they you know their performance has allowed me to probably enjoy it even more than you know I probably would anyway and just on you know you mentioned yesterday you've mentioned a lot about the special spirit of 2016 and that the play is there but tonight I mean very few left from 2016 but yet that spirit epitomized in in that performance and I'm sure you know when you look back start of your career with Wales you, you, maybe that's not the type of game you'd have won is it you know no it, it certainly not I think there was times where it sometimes felt that a, a good performance was was the main thing and as long as it didn't go drastically wrong it was it was okay I think <clears throat> yeah from the qualifying group of the Euros we we changed the mindset um, we, you know, we had that of you know every game matters. You, you turn up and, and you sort of knew what you was going to get, and I think it's carried through right the way through now. And you know, there's there's young lads coming into the squad, but they sort of understand what it what it takes. Um, there's something that's been built, and and for sure they're they're carrying it on. You, you see, of course, that the team was was slightly different tonight. Um, the performances of the boys who started was was brilliant and. You know the people who were who were coming on. Um, yeah, we, we're we're in a, a real good place at the moment, and hopefully after Tuesday night, the, of course that looks better. And then we've all got a, another summer, hopefully similar to what. Even though we're we're living in tough times at the moment, you know one we can all go enjoy. So yeah, really pleased. I'm, you know, just probably want to say thank you to to everyone who's who's reached out and messaged. I, I will try and, and get back to everyone. Um, but, busy few days then. <laughs> yeah, I did. I think I'll set aside um, an hour or two tomorrow. Um, but no, it, it, it does mean it means the absolute world. And, and I've had so many messages of people saying thank you. Um, but I need to point out that there's nothing to thank for me for. I'm the one that, that needs to do the thanking for what they've given me. So, yeah, it means, it means an awful lot to me and my family. And, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's been a complete and utter privilege. Great, great win, clean sheet, captain, well done. Thank Delighted you. for you. Cheers, Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Ultimately, my coming out experience when playing football was uh, an extremely negative one. It is no other way to put it. Unfortunately, I, I'd been playing football pretty much since I was, you know, uh, eight or nine years old. I came out when I was 15 and news got around. I wasn't shy about it. So I, I you know, news got around and they reached my football team and basically they just, they cut me off. Being 15 is difficult, in it, in it, regardless of what you're going through, but with all the things going on, I just decided just to put football to one side and then kind of picked it back up then in my early 20s, um, playing for a couple of local sides. And then when I moved to Cardiff, I decided I, I really want to become involved. And I saw the Dragons um, on online. I found them online and I just literally sent them a message saying, can I just pop down for a training session? And they responded to me the same day and was like, yeah, love to have you. Now it was, you know, almost three years ago now. And that's kind of the, the point of where my football is now. Like I've gone from 
being scared to play to now embracing everything about playing and then looking forward to the future as well, to doing more within the game. If I wasn't involved in women's football, I probably would be, yeah, probably still in the Narnia closet, most probably, because football for me, um, at a very, at a very, very young age, gave me everything that I needed to understand that being gay um, was not only okay, but it was perfectly normal and also great. <laughs> like, I spent a lot of my time playing football and being around people that were so open and supportive um, and visible to me. And I yeah, grew up in in school where you weren't you couldn't talk about it, you weren't allowed to talk about it. Um, you know, my poor mum and dad, they didn't understand anything about it because in their society they weren't allowed to talk about it at all. Um, so yeah, the only place where I knew in my life that that being who I was was remotely okay was football. You want to see someone who's at the top of the game who who is part of that community, but it's going to take an extremely brave person to just, you know, be, be involved already in professional football and, and to come out or whatever. So it needs to be looked at in in a way that it's not really brave. It should be it should be normal. It should just be like you run you run of the mill thing that happens. But unfortunately, at the moment, it's not quite not quite not quite there. But like you say, people like me, like the rest of my team, all my teammates, with Wales and with Swansea can. Can, can help towards and I know myself in in the in the players world kind of thing. I don't think it will be frowned upon as much as as much as it would maybe fans and exterior things. Society um, is a big problem, but the only way you break society is having visibility of their role models and their inspirations telling them that it's okay and inclusivity is vitally important. I know I've got fans of me who were part of that community and that doesn't make them any less of a fan than than the people who aren't, you know what I mean? So yeah, the more the more people we can include and, and make feel make feel welcome and, and happy to, to watch football, listen to football, come play football, coach football, then the better really, isn't it? No, for, for, for me personally, for the Dragons, becoming more involved in the club, it's just helped me so much as a person with my confidence. And it is because of the fact that when you're in that community and you care about everybody involved, it heightens your experience. It makes you feel proud when you step out on the pitch and you're, you're sharing the pitch with those people. It makes me want to fight a bit harder for them. It makes me want to run that extra bit, or it makes me want to, you know, put in that more, that effort because I know that everything I'm doing is worth it, and they make me feel like I'm a part of something that is more than just a football club. And I think that is the, the key thing that has drawn my love and my passion for the Dragons, and why I want it to spread as far and wide as possible. Great. The love of football brings you all together, your love of your country is even more important and strengthens everything and you feel you're part of your, your nation. 
and you're proud of your nation abroad, not only what the boys do on the street, but our history. Superb. But we're all family. We're all family. All Welsh fans. Three, five, six thousand of us away. We're all family. Hello Mary, I feel you need me. Kneel down low and listen clearly. I'm going to tell you what you need to know. It breaks my heart, but I'm letting you go. So take off that wedding ring I gave you. Let them in. come back out we have a handful of changes especially in the England team they have changed their whole lineup except for the number four CJ Egan Riley will be staying on for the second half and captain of the side now will be the number nine Liam Delap it'll be interesting now this is basically changed the game on his head a bit isn't it I mean Wales will have to readapt and change and how do you change the whole lineup being sort of you know ten subs like that yeah, and that's that's the thing is that Wales haven't doesn't look like they've made many many saves at all, um, but uh, yeah, look, look, looking at it, um, Eng England now will have a different way of playing perhaps because there's so many changes in personnel. Bar, bar the one player, CJ Egan Riley, who stays on the pitch, and um, yeah, w Wales will know how to play um, in the in this half, um, and it's, it's just all about now continue how they did in the first half. England might might offer a new way of in a goal, but Wales will take confidence from that first half performance. No changes for Wales in this second half, and Jared Price mentioned in the first half on the comments that the work rate for Wales was key in terms of you know, closing England down and creating those chances, and that's what Rob Edwards will hope to see his side continue to do in this first half. You know, they're against fresh legs, and it'll be a tough ask, but, but hopefully one that Captain Keelan Williams and his side can, can really lead on in this final 45 here. So the game gets underway again by Ben Williams, the Welsh referee, and straight away it's a free kick. Yeah, that's where you want it. You want to get a free kick and just get the ball into a position, either go long, go direct, try and find the player, just try and play the ball around, which it looks like Wales are going to do. We're going to play the ball around um, in this one and try and open the defence on the floor. So England are now captained up front by Liam Delap. He's the son of former long throw specialist Rory Delap and Jordan you've got, you got a, done a bit of work researching him yeah so um, I found that the 18 the year old has been on fire uh, in the Premier League 2 this season scoring 20 goals and 4 assists in 15 games so more goals than games that he's played this season he's also played a part in 38% of Manchester City's goals this season and even got called up to the first team as well but could make an impact in Man City's 5-2 loss to Leicester City so another player that actually has senior team experience and it just shows that Wales are up against some quality players here but they've more than held their own in the first half and they'll be hoping for the same in the second Pop off, headed down to Williams Williams looking for Vigors his guess of the ball but it's a bit of a push there on William Fish. And it's, a, it's a free kick for England. It's hard as well in terms of a commentator. When you change 10 players, you're basically learning a whole new set of names on the pitch again. But it does look like England have kept that 4 3 3 shape. Wales playing three centre backs, two wing backs. 
It looks like sort of Joel Cottrell and Chris Popper are the threats up top then. Yeah, that's the thing. It'll be interesting to see when Wales make the changes now as well. It's all about getting players on that might offer a different route at goal. Um, in England have probably made, made those subs just so everyone has minutes and uh, Kevin Betsby can see what other players can offer in certain roles um, because that, that's what this game is probably about. It's about giving players first team minutes to prepare for those under-19 qualifiers. The ball goes down to Barr on the right-hand side. Barr looks for his options, but he's challenged by Harry Jones, who keeps the ball in place. We have a good battling by Barr. Go back to Chikomeka. Wales with the chances in the first half. A saved penalty from Ryan Vegas' effort. Keelan Williams hitting the post, so be good to see what they can offer in this final 45 here. Yeah, yeah but a good strong end to, uh, end to the first half as well and they probably unlucky not to score that shot hitting the post as well and um, that head as well from Taylor Jones going agonisingly wide as well and it's all about Wales continuing where they left off in the first half and hopefully we'll see more more action from Chris Popov who was definitely the danger man for Wales in that first half. Throwing for Wales here on the right hand side to be taken by Taylor Jones. Played out on the right hand side to Ayagoke. Just noted there as well with Keelan Williams is that he's playing as a fullback, but he's actually gone centrally. I remember Pep Guardiola talking about how his fullbacks sometimes going centrally and uh, Perhaps we're seeing that as well, is that the fullbacks can move into different positions to cover ground, but also get into different positions. Played on the left hand side to Adorzi. And they're once again looking for the space through this Welsh shape. As they drift across to the right hand side and back into the middle of the park. Alex Scott in possession knocks it on a chance there for Barber couldn't quite connect as Max Williams watches the ball go out to play yeah nice ball over the top there and it, it just just misses Guardo Bar um, but yeah in England there with the early stages of the game of, of the second half trying to open the Welsh defence up but um, Wales dealt with it Figures driving forwards from inside his own half. Sorry, probably G Wing, the Leicester City midfielder. Plays it out wide and eventually goes back to Harry Jones. Williams. Marking up, couldn't quite find the red shirt there as Dozy picks up the ball, but well dealt with by the Welsh defence. If you are just joining us for the second half, England have made uh, a range of changes here. Ten substitutions from the team that started the match. The only player staying on was CJ Egan Riley, who currently is in possession. Striker Liam Datlap is now the captain on the pitch for Kevin Betsy's side. Back to fish. England just playing the ball round correctly now, just playing it round in possession and trying to open up the Welsh defence. Um, and they're getting into good positions as well. The, the introduction of the new attackers have uh, often offered a new dimension for England's attack. England look to attack here once again. Chukwueka plays it out wide to. Are you okay? Yeah, Chukamak is really putting himself into this second half as well. He's comfortable in possession. He's trying to take the ball forward, and Wales have to be wary of the uh, the new players that have come on as well because I imagine they'll have, they'll have known perhaps what the first half team was and know what their strengths was because there was a few players that had senior experience, and now there's a few that 
probably uh, like the academy teams and it's perhaps an unknown quantity. The wind just picking up here in Lecco Stadium with 50 minutes in. Wales nil, England nil. It's the first under 18s match for the Wales side in more than 20 years. I think Rob Edwards will be pretty pleased by the performance so far. Been interested in final 40 now though, Jordan and England got the fresh legs already on Wales. They'd probably be looking to make some changes. It'd be, it'd be a big test for those boys coming on as well. Oh yeah, most definitely. And the changes that Rob Edwards will make eventually in the game, hopefully that will be the case of him wanting to get something out of this game as well. The players on the pitch so far have, have done well. They've, they've held their own, and um, definitely we're the best team in that first half in creating opportunities, but also keeping England quiet. There was only a few opportunities that England did have. Um, but, 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 but yeah, um, with, with Wales, Rob Edwards would definitely be happy with that and as well. And it, it just allows them, because it's, it's good that we've got Matthew Jones here as well, because obviously he'll be overseeing the team as well. He'll be taking the under-18s team forward as well. So it's, it's good that he's still involved in the picture as well. It's a Wales free kick. Just an inch or two inside their own half. And Wales played back for Jay Williams. Originally from Earth and Keenan Williams, boy from Kev Mar, couldn't quite find the space on the right hand side there. He really, is, really is the spit of his brother, isn't he? There's a few of them here. There's Keenan Williams here, the right back brother of Nico Williams, while you've got Charlie Savage, the son of uh, former Wales international Robbie Savage in the centre of the park. And it's interesting to see the Welsh football family really sort of coming through the generations here at Leckworth this afternoon. Yeah, Joel Cottrell as well, um, the cousin of David Cottrell and Wales Sea International, Jordan Cottrell. And you've also got as well, you've got Rio Dyer on the bench for Wales today. And he, he of course, is the son of former Neef manager Simon Dyer as well. So, as we say, the Welsh football family is always big. And so probably in Wales, such a small country that somebody definitely knows someone else. <laughs> there you go, Williams skips it past the lap and plays it on to the left-hand side. Eventually goes back to Harry Jones. Harry Jones qualifies through a father who's Welsh. Savage flicks it onto the left hand side, and we all know how he qualifies for Wales. And it's Tom Davis. Looks to whip it in, but couldn't quite find the red shirt in that England box. It's Taylor Jones looks to reset things. Two way wing. T towards Harry Jones, and eventually to Tom Davis. He's been busy on that left-hand side, as he, Jordan? He's quite a threat for Wales in the first half. Yeah, most definitely as well. And I think a lot of Wales players um, put themselves about in in that first half. They, the full-backs put themselves forward. But as we know, they, they were wing-backs, actually. And um, it, is, it proves a smooth transition to the senior team because the, the team are playing similar to how the seniors play. And they're in possession, but also playing with wing-backs who aren't afraid to go forward. Oh, there we go. It's a chance for Wales here. Yeah. Oh. And it's a save and that came from nowhere once again and it's, yeah. it's right in figures and it's another chance for Wales but an impressive save there and Wales are kept at bay once again. Side splitting pass there as well from Ollie Ewing. Real great pass through there to Vigas and uh, Vigas has had a few opportunities now. Uh, in in this match, and I've really been impressed by o Ollie Ewing, um, the, Le the Leicester City man. He's, he's really put himself about, and he, he's opened up the England defence there and created great through ball to Vigors for that opportunity. Just whipped in, the ball goes in there. Jones with a header. As far as Ewing on the edge of the box, but England look to clean up, and that's a brave challenge in by Ewing. Caught oh. it like a cute little turn by the Swansea midfielder. Caught it with the shot, oh. and it's a great save once again by Oliver Wemmy. Sorry there, Toby Oliver Wemmy. Great save there. He's been busy for the last <laughs> few minutes since his introduction at half time, and a bit of magic there by Joel Cottrell. Oh, that was filthy, wasn't it? Like, absolutely turned his player inside out. Fed it to Joel Cottrell and had a great opportunity for Wales to take the lead as well. And it's, it's all Wales now at the moment. Um, Eng England had those chances in the opening five minutes of the half. And now Wales are just absolutely peppering that goal. And you, you do feel that Wales might open the scoring here. Another the corner for Wales. Savage to take this time. 
Referee just having a quick conversation there. Looks like it's Jay Williams. It's a reminder to keep the arms down as Savage whips the ball in. It's a great cross Ooh. in and Williams goes to ground. The ref waves play on as it's cleared away there by Fish. England on the attack is the number two. It's Danny Lloyd. Oh, you got okay, but it's a, it's a free kick and a name in the book there for Wales. Uh, not hundred percent sure who picked up the book. Yeah, it? looks like looks like it was Keelan Williams there, and um, you don't usually get a yellow card in a friendly. But I think Keelan had to make that tackle there because England were on the counter attack from that corner, and uh, he's put himself into, into the right position now, where he's meant to be, and um, a, ye a yellow card for him. Um, and yeah, England now looks like they're making a substitute. Nice. Two changes here for Wales. It's the number 19, Corner Salisbury, and 22, Car Cameron Congreve coming on. And departed on the 56 minute mark is Joel Cottrell after a little bit of magic there, where he came, he came close to scoring a wonder goal to put Wales in the lead here at Leckwood Stadium. Great performance from the Swansea City midfielder. And the final sub the second substitution for. Wales, it's Ryan Vigas coming off. The Sheffield United attacking midfielder being replaced by Cameron Congreve, the Swansea City midfielder, 17 year old, originally from Bryn Mawr, attended Cum Tower School. So, uh, good performances there from Vigas and Cottrell, Jordan. Yeah. Um, I think it was unfortunate with the penalty and a bit of magic from Cottrell, unfortunate not to get a goal as well. Yeah, but both of them there, Vigas, probably with that penalty miss. Um, I think he really picked himself up after that miss and had a few more opportunities and we've just seen a chance just then um, for Vigas. And Cott Cottrell as well, opening the England defence up. And interesting to see that Popov has stayed on the pitch. It shows that he's staying on the pitch for a few more minutes and uh, he, he might open up the England defence and uh, bring in the new substitutes that have come on as well, Congreve and Salisbury. Positive opening for the second half here for, for both sides, really, you know, creating chances. Wales probably maybe just edging it at the moment in, in the opening 10 minutes, but the game could go either way, and it's, it's an exciting one for fans coming right up here. Nothing more pleasing as well to just see a full back swap, swap the play over to the, op the opposition, uh, sorry, to the opposite fullback as well. One, one of the most enjoyable things, I think, watching football is just watching him spray it. You see it, refs from Liverpool and Alexander Arnold and uh, Andy Robertson from Wales have just done it in. It's just so pleasing to watch, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and Connor Salisbury straight into the physical action there, the number 19. Originally from Kinmel Bay in North Wales, tended to Glan Cloyd and uh, now playing for Crew Alexandra over in the English league system. It's really nice to see as well all the backgrounds that these players come from, North Wales, South Wales, Mid Wales, because that's what you want to see. You want to see Wales truly represented um, in these teams, in these lineups. and sometimes players come from across the border and qualify other ways as well, but a lot of these players we saw in the anthem as well is that how proudly they sang the Welsh national anthem and um, I've really been impressed with what they've offered so far. And if you are watching on the live streams, we have just over two and a half thousand people still tuned in at the moment. So, Christ once again and pronounced that from Lequid Stadium and drops a comment as where you're watching from as the ball feeds through there, but it's well cleared up by Toby Olawameni. A busy few minutes, but things might have settled down at the moment for the English goalkeeper. So, yeah, got, a, got his chance to get his breath back after some quite good chances from Wales early on in this half. Yeah, nice to see him composed on the ball as well. He's he's, he's dealt with what was coming and made that instinctive save to deny Cottrell um, as well. Really, really impressive to see the goalkeepers uh, in the first half as well. It was a great com commanding performance from Graziak for England and Max Williams, of course, put himself about for Wales and uh, Ole Yemi is uh, putting the same in for England in the second half. It's OK, OK. Looks to drive it forward and... Switches a play there for number three, James Norris. Norris, the full back, plays it forward to Adozi. Adozi on the edge of the Welsh box here, blocked in by Keelan Williams with a helping hand from Harry Jones. 
Dozy once again dribbles in, but it's Taylor Jones with a foot in there. It's a strong foot, and he, oh, and he sells superb. James Norris for the hot dogs there. As <laughs> Congreve looks to attack on this right hand side. Congreve keeps on going, but ends up tripping over the ball, and you don't see that sort of move normally from a centre back in, uh, in Taylor Jones, do you? No, um, I think the only other centre back could, that could really do that, I can remember off the top of my head, is probably Virgil van Dijk, obviously. Uh, Worlds apart, but absolutely great composure there from the centre back to just hold the ball there and send as send the attack as you said for a hot dog, um, and that's what you want. You just want that fearlessness from these players at this age because obviously it's just it's, it's a friendly. There's, there's rivalry at stake between Wales and England, but um, sometimes games like this allow young players to show themselves their ability, but also their confidence. It's been a good performance so far from the Welsh number five, Taylor Jones. Centre back plays for Cardiff City, originally from Aberdeen. Mm. Also had that chance in the first half as well, didn't he? Almost opened the score in four Wales. So um, not only is he good on the ball, he's also good at heading the ball and almost opening the score in four Wales. Some credit here for Joel Cottrell from Louise Tudor. Currently watching and uh, thought he played well in the second half. I think that's fair to say. Credit to Cottrell for, for the youngsters' performance here at Leckwith this afternoon as England look to attack once again. Did I couldn't quite reach that ball, but he's in possession of it now. Captain looks up, plays it towards Chukumeka. In possession here, driving the side forward. Plays it to Oki Oki, the, the full back, and cleared away by Ewing. Wales just having to defend now as well. Um, they've had those opportunities uh, to test the goalkeeper, but it just seems now England are finding their feet in this game. Those, those changes now have, have settled and they're, they're getting on the ball now as well. And obviously the player to watch right now is Chukameka. Um, he is the one that is trying to open the door of Wales' defence and open the scoring for England. But so far he's really put in a good shift since his introduction at the break. Player on the back, Egan Riley, the, the only player still on from that first half for England. It goes out for the throw in. Adam Bachter watching from Chester. It's been a good Welsh performance so far, and it's, it's good to hear, and, and it is good to see that from Re Rob Edwards' side. Just under 65 minutes gone here at Leckwith. So it's a strong England side out here this afternoon. You've had Champions League players, Europa League players starring for them, and Wales have really held their ground. It's been a, it's been a great performance so far, and we, we hope to see that for the remaining 25 minutes here, Jordan. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Uh, a lot of the players in Wales' side have only been able to play at academy level. Sometimes, chance there for England. Oh, it's a chance, and that's a penalty. Oh. It's all day long. It's a penalty for England. De Lapp went looking for the ball, and he did really well to get the touch just before Max Williams could dive out. And it's the same side around the same time as Wales' penalty in the first half, and it's the captain Liam De Lapp gets the opportunity there for England. Yeah, just thought Max Williams might have timed that well, but uh, he catches his leg just before the ball's about to go out of play as well. Gives England a great opportunity to open the scoring, and it looks like Delap is going to get the opportunity to put that spot kick away as well. Williams, Salford City goalkeeper, what can he do here for Wales? Or will it be Liam Delap putting England in the lead? No mistake there from Liam de Lapp. He had the power, the accuracy, and that's 1 0 England. Yeah, and that's the difference between the two penalties. It's the first half penalty from Vigors, he tried to place it, but for de Lapp, he's just absolutely ripped that, leaving Max Williams with no chance to save that, and as well. And you could kind of sense that it was coming for England as well, is that they. They had the attacking opportunities in the last five minutes and they put their opportunity away and now it's up to Wales to react. Will we see substitutes in this? Um, or is Rob Everett going to hope that the players on the field can make the difference to get back on level terms? How will Wales react to that? If 
you could say they're unfortunate to be one behind, but at the same time, England have also made the chances they've attacked. It's it's been quite an end-to-end game that, that could still go either way, really. Yeah, and that, that's the thing is that Wales have been competitive in this. Is that they, they were the better team in the first half as well, as well, and they, they still still have a chance in this match is to, to get something out of it as well. It's all about just reacting positively to that. Now they they didn't lose their heads when they didn't score from the penalty, and it's all about now just not losing your heads, not losing your concentration, and just getting back on to level terms and trying to open up the England defence. Toby Oluwamemi plays it out to James Norris. Back to Oluwamemi. Number 13 plays for Celtic. Alongside his teammate Karamoko Dembele, who was on for the first half on the wing. Norris drives England forward, passes it to Alex Scott. Scott. Looking for his options. Passes to the number 14, Chukomeka. Pass to Bar. Bar on the edge of the box. Bar drills it in. Oh! Ooh. Could have been two there for England. Bar, half an inch of space, and he really made the most of it. And unfortunately, just to glance that far post for him there. Yeah, really not that far wide from the goal as well. And that's another warning sign for Wales. Now, we've just spoken about Wales have got to keep their concentration. You can't allow England to have opportunities like that. And they've got another chance here. Breaking into the box. Ooh. The chance there for Alex Scott there. Almost making it 2-0 as well. Wales need to keep their concentration now because they're just allowing opportunities for England to take a further two-goal lead. And this is where things get decisive now for Wales. And... England have sort of turned up the gears a bit and how will Wales respond? They've been, they've been attacking these last five minutes, creating these chances, Barr and Scott and could be a big 25 or so minutes here for Wales. Can, can they get the chances to, to get back in the game score ways? They've certainly been, been in it on the pitch but not quite there in terms of the scoreline at the moment. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether Rob Edwards brings on further changes. Now we've seen Congrave and Salisbury come on in the attacking positions, but is it now time to bring some other players on just to give them a few minutes and try and shore up the defence? That's another set piece here for England. Attacking opportunity, I think it was Liam Delap was being quite busy there and, and won the side the free kick. Looking aside here, Rob Edge was maybe looking to make some changes as he calls down Harry Leeson off the bench. But on the pitch, it's a chance for England. The referee just marking down the wall. Looks like Alex Scott's going to take this as well. He's just had an opportunity for England to make it 2-0 and he's got one from a set piece too. Mm-hmm. Bristol City, midfielder. He's control the play in the middle of the park for England so far, what can he do here, Scott with a free kick goes long but parried away for an England corner there by Max Williams maybe not quite enough power as Scott would have liked on that but it's taken quick by England on the right hand side as they look to bring the play in swished across to Bar. Quadro Bar in possession Slick little play there eventually ends up with James Norris. Norris, the number three, trapped by Keelan Williams. Played across to a dozy. Dozy back to Norris. So uh, Keelan gets the foot in there and Dozy fails to keep the ball in play. And good, good defensive work there by the Welsh captain. Gets the possession back for his side. Yeah, it's all about now just taking a bit of time out. They've got to throw in now, try and get players into the right positions and just try and calm a few, a few things down because England have had a few more opportunities to just further their lead as well. And with that, you don't, you don't want to go two goals down because then it's an uphill battle to get into the game. And Wales have been competitive, so it wouldn't be if they were a fraction of the game if they were to ship another goal and then perhaps fall further behind. So it's all about just re- reacting positively now and trying to get back onto level terms. But they've got to stop England attacking. Delap powers his way past Ollie Ewing there. Norris, the fullback, has been playing quite high so far this half to a dozy. 
Scott takes a chance. Dilap battles for the possession. It's bat on the edge of the box and strong defensive work there by Williams and Jones, the centre backs. Stops England chances, but Dilap, Dilap's a strong figure up top for England at the moment. Yeah, Mo most definitely as well, and we all know that as, uh, as far as the Stoke City legend Rory Dilap and his physicality he was in that Stoke City team, and he had that set piece specialist throw in. Um, as well, but his, his son, the attacking player, the forward, has put himself about and got that goal that he deserved from earning the penalty for himself as well. And uh, it just shows that he, he's one of those players that has first team experience. And having first team experience for a team like Manchester City, currently top of the Premier League, firing on all cylinders in all competitions and giving up opportunities in the cup competitions. Um, it's no mean feat to, to be playing for an academy like Manchester City. You've got to be a good player. Just looking at the comments here, nice one from Dylan Lewis on Facebook. The game is bringing back memories for playing against England. Will schoolboys in the Kai Ras in Wrexham in 1988, and he's saying that Wales are giving as good as they get in here this afternoon at Leckwith. So, proud dad, Dylan. I hope you're enjoying the game from Maryland in the USA. It's good to see fans tuning in from all over the world. Just looking on the bench here, it does look like number 18, Luke Mariette, could be coming on for Wales. It's Mariette, plays for Blackburn, originally from Rill in North Wales, and he's one of two Welsh speakers in this crop of under 18s players. There's England on the attack, and Dilap can quite find Norris there. As the ball goes out for the Wales free kick. That's in fact a triple substitution for Wales, so joining Luke Mariett coming on will be the number 15, uh, Zach Bell, and the number 14, mentioned earlier, Harry Leeson. Departing the pitch with uh, just under 74 minutes played here at Leckwith will be the number seven Charlie and Savage who's an impressive performance in the middle of the park in the Welsh shirt this afternoon. Alongside Captain Keelan Williams. And the other one was unfortunate not to give Wales a lead in the first half with an F to hit the post. And then the final sub for Wales coming on, coming off the uh, number three Tom Davis, another one who's been busy this afternoon. The wing back, probably a good chance for a fresh pair of legs on that side with Zach Pell coming on. Yeah, interesting time to make these substitutions as well. 15 minutes remaining. That's obviously the statistic you look at in how many goals you can see in the last 15 minutes of the game, the last quarter of the game. Um, and Rob Edwards, to be fair to him, he's kept loyal to the players that started the game and perhaps he's identified a few players that he might uh, need for the under-19s team as well, whilst allowing Matthew Jones to uh, work with the younger players, work with the players that he likes as well. Um, interesting to see what the substitutes offer now at front, um, because those personnel changes we've seen England have kind of changed their route up goal and Wales might have to change theirs now. Interesting. Just looking here, it looks like it's Zach Bell that's gone on the right hand side while Harry Leeson will be taking a left wing back role in place of Tom Davis. But it's another attack with Scott, and it's Ooh. a good chance there, a bit of a half chance perhaps for a dozy, but couldn't quite get the connection on his left foot there as it sails over Max Williams' crossbar. Yeah, and he's been sort of a nippy player for England. He's he's getting the ball in the positions that he wants it, and he is causing problems full of full-backs. And that opportunity there, he, um, great opportunity to make it 2-0 as well. And um, Wales have got perhaps got a man mark and have got to deal with the danger of Dozy. The ball. Play back to all the way, Amy. Looks once again for Alice Scott, that's a battling header there by Taylor Jones. Wales just need to get a few more opportunities in the attacking third because they've been a bit quiet 
and allowed England to attack them even more. So it's look, looking more likely to be 2-0 to England rather than Wales levelling up. Drives forward, plays it to Bai, he's got space. Yeah, that's a great tackle once again by Taylor Jones. And what a performance from the boy from Abadeh here this afternoon. I think he's, he's one to look out for the future perhaps. Oh yeah, m most definitely. This this game is is the one for people to watch. Is that you always look at the age grade teams, international and club level, and you're always looking at the young players. And obviously, a, a player like today, Taylor Jones, is putting a good shift. Um, and then you'll, you'll perhaps see you'll be like, oh, I want to see him in the first team. Let's give him a chance. And that's only get it's, it's good for them because they get exposure from this game. They have scouts watching them. They have coaches watching them. They also have fans watching them. And then that just builds their exposure and it puts them on a pedestal really. Yeah, it's been encouraging for Rob Edgers to see the potential future of Welsh football here at Leckwith this afternoon as England have the ball just on the halfway line here with James Balakizi. Is it Egan Riley just slowing things down? Actually ends up with Norris. England driving forward here. It's a little ball through. It's a number 14. Oh. And it's a second of the match for England. It's Kani Chukwemeka. And he made no mistake with that calm finish. As he doubles England's lead. It's Wales nil, England 2. Yeah, a very well taken finish there for England. And they've just opened up the defence with ease there as well. And Chukameka just slots it past the goalkeeper, Max Williams, and a deserved second goal for England. You could kind of tell that that goal was coming because they've had all of the attacking opportunities for the last 20 minutes or so. And it's harsh on Wales because they've put in a good performance up until the hour. They've, they've had the opportunities, they've defended well, but it's just, it's just slipped away from them. And that's the thing, and credit to Wales, it, it, it's been a sort of an edge to edge, a bit of a boxing match on points really so far, but, but in terms of looking at the goals of the penalty for England and the second then, England, it's, it's what they do, it's, it's teams of this calibre, this level, and the, the strength and depth they've got, they, they can change the whole team, and it's, it's made a difference for them in this second half. Yeah, and that's the old adage as well, is that if you don't take your chances, then you might be punished. <laughs> and um, that's probably what's happened with Wales, is that they've had so many opportunities and they don't have anything to show for it because they haven't been able to break the scoring. It's, it's Ozzy, and the attack once again here for England to Delap. Ball's knocked back to the number 20. Balgizi. It's Ba. Plays it out to Ayagoge. mentioned earlier the Wales women's team will be at here at Leck with a week Friday taking on Canada the Gemma Granger's first match in, in charge of the national side she'll be announcing the squad around lunchtime this Wednesday Max Williams picks the ball up for Wales and plays it out straight away to Popov who's playing quite deep at the moment then Oh, sorry, but it wasn't Pop. It was Pop looking for the ball. Is Jay Williams with the pass there? Yeah, just overestimated the pass there. He thought he could run onto it, and then he's at to, except the England defender has intercepted it. And uh, it's all about now just Wales creating opportunities and, and just trying to pull one back because then that gives you a bit of confidence. And sometimes if you can get a goal in the last 10 minutes, it makes for a nervy ending as well. But so what, what's, that's what's needed from Wales. They just need to get a few more opportunities and then they might upset England to put the pressure on in the last few moments. It looks like there's some further changes here on the bench for Wales. We're going to just see Keen Williams taking his kit off. The, the boy from Carnarvon, Welsh speaker, now playing for Swansea City. Rissa Dozy on the pitch to James Norris and Taylor Jones in the right place, right time once again. And... He, he's, he's certainly been a positive in the Welsh back line this afternoon. Yeah, most most definitely is that as a young defender, you want to be putting yourselves in with a chance of just being comfortable at the back, making sure that you, you do the job that's asked of you. And It's a bit of a shame for the defenders that they don't have a clean sheet or so to show for it. But he's really put himself about Taylor Jones as well. He's shown that he's got defensive qualities, but also attacking qualities. 
as well from from set pieces, and that, that's what perhaps Wales might need. They just might need a corner or so to uh, get the defenders into position. I'm on the ball now. Here we go. Congreve, but eventually dispossessing his bar, flicks it back well there, but he wing to Congreve. As he gets the calm in touch as he switches across to Leeson on the left hand side. Leeson dinks it forward there, but Salisbury couldn't quite get there and it's gone out for a Welsh corner. Yeah, nice yeah, key chance for a bit of an attacking opportunity here for Wales. It does look like Rob Edwards will be making some changes, but probably not probably going to wait just for the corner to be done here just, just before doing anything yeah don't complicate things now just if, if you've got your set piece routines keep your players on the pitch and then make the substitutes if it doesn't work out for you corner goes in for Wales and Ooh. it glances wide is the number four there for Wales Harry Jones and that's, a, that's, that's been the first chance for a while really and it's only a half chance, but it could have gone in the back of the net. They just glanced past the near post here on the screen. Yeah, man, that's that's, that's going to help Wales now. Is that they might take confidence from at least putting the goalkeeper under pressure there, and that that might be their route at goal now is to, is to get some set pieces because throughout this match they they've used set pieces to challenge the England defence. Oh, I am. He picks it up there, just just on the dead ball line. Looks like there'll be a goalkeeper sub here for Wales in, in these final eight minutes or so. It's the Ben Hughes coming on to make his under-18 debut. In fact, he's actually been involved in the Wales under-19 futsal side in, in some recent training camps. So, it's an interest in a potential deal international on the cards here. Any of the only substitutions for Wales in the high in the field number one, Max Williams. Yeah, interesting to see that as well with a futsal in, international. Is it shows that there's transferable skills and the benefits of playing futsal. Uh, another three changes for Wales on the on the pitch as well. It'll be Rio Dyer coming on for the striker Chris Popper was really impressed, particularly in that first half. Wales there before Lewis Twamley on his first international camp here this week. The Newport County attacking midfielder looks like he's coming on for Ollie Ewing. So pass. And then the final sub of the match for Wales will be Kean Williams, the boy from Carnarvon. And it looks like he's going to be coming on centre back in place of number four, Harry Jones. Yeah, pop off and Ewing there have really put themselves about. And that, that's all you want is that these, these two attacking players, um, they, they should be proud of the shift that they put in today for Wales. Uh, pop off has created many opportunities. Ewing has created the opportunities for Wales. And uh, they, they should be proud of, of what they put in today for Wales, like a, a lot of the players. First touch for Dyer there. But he would... Wouldn't mind a few goes near the up high of the park, but he's driving on here. Diane, he does well to win the free kick there for Wales. The the Hell City attacking midfielder originally from Skewen in Neath. It'd be interesting to see now what what can they make work here? They they've been practicing these most of the week on the training ground. Looks like it will be Dyer taking the free kick here on the left hand side. And it's not, it's just knocked in by Congreve. And it's another Ooh. chance for Wales, and it's just gone over the bar again. And I think the chance there came for Luke Mariette. And they have been coming, Jordan, haven't they? Just been a bit unfortunate. A couple of half chances could have gone either way. And Wales still looking for, for that elusive goal in these closing moments. Yeah, and a, a nice little. Dink, well, uh, a ploy there to try and put off the England defence because it looked like Dyer was going to put in and then it was Congreve and then ultimately England think that he's going to be taking the free kick and Wales created an opportunity from that and uh, Salisbury there almost put in, well, putting a goal to Wales' name. So just just over four minutes to go plus any stop time here at Leckwith. 
fair to say Wales have had the chances. Unfortunate in the first half with a missed penalty, hitting the woodwork, and the class of England really did show in this, uh, has shown in the second half so far. And it could show again as Delap battles forward in possession. He does well, keep hold of the ball and finds it. Dozy, Dozy into the box, dinks it past Jones and oh. can't quite keep oh. the ball. He's kept it in play on the ref. No, he hasn't, and it's. Uh, in the back of the net but it's a goal kick for Wales and good battle going on there between Adolzi and Jones you know this late into the game and Jones has been everywhere but, but he's still giving 100% in the red shirt of Wales yeah and I thought Adolzi almost kept the ball in play there as well he's had really neat feet there to create that opportunity and uh, Jones has obviously marked him out to um, get the goal kick well get the goal kick for Wales to uh, dry out the pressure but dozy has been influential in the second half for England so Jordan it's been a positive performance from Wales I think it's fair to say and who's, who's been the standout players for you during the 90 minutes well I, I, would, I would say um, with, with that I'd say Taylor Jones has, has impressed me at the back and um, Ollie Ewing I thought was creating many opportunities for Wales and um, Chris Popov as well. Chris Popov, we, we were, he was constantly going down the flanks and he was trying to get his other teammates involved. And um, yeah, those those three have really impressed me. But a lot of the players playing for Wales today have put themselves in with a shout. Cottrell had an opportunity early in the second second half as well, and the, the defence have been capable. Keelan Williams, as expected, has um, put in a good shift. He, he's led as the captain of Wales today and um, instructed the defend, defenders and his midfield and forwards to go forward and try and keep that solidity at the back but yeah I think a lot of the players will take a lot of confidence from this game today because England are a top outfit Alex Scott stuck on the halfway line there and he's, he's battled away from the ball by Taylor Jones so if you are wondering what the next game's coming up for Wales the big one is for the senior team tomorrow night facing the Czech Republic just across the road here see just by the side of the Asda funny enough is the Cardiff City Stadium kick off of that match with uh, Rob Page his side will be quarter to eight tomorrow and it'll be live on Sky Sports and S4C it's Wales look to get an attack but Lewis Twamley thwarted off the ball there by William Fish Nice to see Wales now in England's attacking third in the latest stage of the game, and um, if they can just get that goal back, then and it shows that it was a close four game. I don't think if England would score again, perhaps, then it wouldn't be a fair reflection of the game because I think Wales have been competitive in this, and uh, I think Wales have done enough to stop England from getting that third goal. Hopefully, not the commentator's curse now, but um, let's yeah. hope not. <laughs> Yes, it's a good test this for Wales. Obviously, this under-18 group will be moving up in September into the under-19s level, and they will be taking part in the regular UEFA Championships. It's good to see those tournaments hopefully be starting back at the end of the year after the two seasons of cancellations. Really, so it's been difficult for the age group sides to, you know, get the experience they probably need at the international level. Yeah, that's the thing as well, and the most disappointing thing was probably the end of 19 s being cancelled, because I really enjoyed how Wales performed in those three games as well, and it was the birth of Nico Williams' Wales career, because we saw him being so influential in that, and it was mad, it was, it was in the same season Nico Williams went from playing from Wales' under 19 s to being a Champions League winner, to, to being a Premier League winner, sorry. That's a chance you bring this to lap on goal. Yeah, can he find a team? It looks for Scott, but it's this was it by Dozy and the, the left foot shot just scrambles wide of that far post and with three minutes of additional time here at Lequa Stadium. It's currently Wales nearly England too, but it's been a great performance by both sides. Chances created. Unfortunate Wales to say not, not to get a goal or two here, but be plenty of positives for Rob Edwards and I see in his side return to action after, after a long period out for some of these players at the international stage. 
Yeah, and that's the most important thing as well. And obviously, most recently, kids across Wales are now allowed to play football once more, and that's 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 much needed. As you want, as you want everyone to be able to play, and hopefully, um, we'll see more people playing football over time. But it's, it's most importantly just to see kids enjoying football again. And these academy players have certainly enjoyed it today. Seeing an attack once again, but there's a bit of a foul there by Zach Bell on. Samuel Edozi. That's Ben Williams. Just make sure the free kick's taken okay. And it's Delap, the captain. Delap, he's been busy. It's another chance. And I think Ben Hughes would have had that covered on the near post. But he has been an exciting player coming on, Liam Delap, for England. He's uh, he certainly made a difference up top for them, the Manchester City striker. Proper number nine as well, isn't he? Just the way that he's. He's, he's won a few flick ons, but he's also really good with his feet as well. And a, a bit years a, of chances, Twamley on the attack for Wales. He's ended up with a bit of space and just couldn't quite get that final pass off there. A bit unfortunate. Couldn't find the run of Real Dyer. But it always is on the attack again. <laughs> and yet again, it's Taylor, Taylor Jones and. The boy from Aberdeen has really stepped up to it this afternoon as the ball goes out for the England corner. Yeah, one word I'd have to describe for Taylor Jones today is tireless. Doesn't look like he's knackered at all. He's put an absolute shift in for Wales and unfortunate not to get on the score sheet and unfortunate to have two goals conceded against his name, but he's been one of the star performers in, for Wales today. Scott with the corner in and it's a good header by Fish but goes over the bar and that is the end of the match here at Leckwith and it's been an end to end match there's chances for either side Wales unfortunately not to take a lead in the first half with a missed penalty from Ryan Vigors and Keelan Williams the wing back hitting the woodwork but England really showed their class in the second half a range of changes led by captain Liam Delap in the second half scoring the penalty and the second goal coming for Carney Chukwemeka but Jordan, just briefly, a good performance for Wales and I think fans should be quite pleased by see a potential future of Welsh football there today. Yeah, this opportunity for the Wales play, this is a chance for fans to see the young players and they put a good shift in today. You have to remind yourself that England are a team that win World Cups at this kind of level as well. So a respectable result for Wales today and um, it'll, it'll take a lot of confidence into their qualifying matches at under-19s level. And it's been a great opportunity to see the young stars of the future. Thank you very much, George, and well, thanks to all the fans who have joined us here this afternoon on the Facebook and YouTube streams. We hope this helped you Monday afternoon, regardless of the result. It was a great Welsh performance here at Lekwa Stadium in Cardiff. Jochem and Mino, thank you very much for joining.